Our next victim is Ed Valiente from Nintendo talking about how to get your uh, game on the eShop. Ed, thank you very much. Afternoon, I'm the Center Coach. This is a talk that I give at various places uh, around Europe and Australia. Uh, and Nintendo wouldn't be allowed to say anything that's not actually what it's going to be. So, this is very much a process like how do you become a developer and how do you get your game out and how can we help you? Uh, so, yeah, that's my me. Uh, I work for the European Publisher Business Department, which is mainly based in Frankfurt, but I'm based down in Windsor. So we look after everyone from you know, Activision, EA, right down to one girl in her shed making a game. So we, we, we treat everybody the same, and you know, we're really excited to work with some really good indie developers. Does anyone here own a uh, Wii U or a Nintendo 3DS? Wow. Okay. <laughs> So what's the eShop? Well, it's just our distribution platform uh, on device for discovering and buying uh, games. Uh, as we're a games company, almost everything on there is a video game related. We do have a couple of kind of non-gaming apps, uh, Crunchyroll, which is like an um, anime, um, VOD, things like that. But really, it's all about um, video games. And, of course, on the new 3DS as well. So the shop is available in Europe in 24 different countries with um, a bunch of different currencies as well. Uh, this is what the shop looks like in Europe. So on the left there you've got the Nintendo 3DS shop. Uh, and we have a permanent shelf of indie stuff, but it's not like we segregate indie from other things. So if we have a section, for example, we update things with games with street pass or fun multiplayer games. If that doesn't make her an indie and you're covered by that, you could be included. So there's every chance that you could be next to Smash Brothers or Mario Kart. And you can see there, for example, on the Wii U side of things, we've got Affordable Space Adventures, which has a large, uh, you know, as large as Pandora's Power, and Elliot Quest, another indie game that was made in Web Framework, um, Oli Oli, Shovel Knight. So we don't discriminate by size of game or anything like that. And there are no paid spots, so it's a case of, is the game good? And does it, you know, it could even be very niche, but if we feel that our audience is going to like it, we can promote it. So my department works closely with our eShop uh, to, um, to help promote your games. Um, it mentions there sales and promotions, so you're in charge of the pricing and the release date. Uh, so if you want to launch with a sale, you can. If you want to do a permanent price reduction, you can. You just need to fill in some forms and get that to us. Obviously, the earlier we know about things, the more we can help you. So if you just say, oh, we want to go on sale next week, so, well, actually, it takes two weeks to set up, and uh, next, in two weeks' time, is not particularly good because this game is coming out, so we can't guarantee you any space, so how about delaying that for a week? Um, you can also give one to five star reviews as well, and say if you're a casual gamer or an experienced gamer, and uh, recommendations come, you know, other Amazon or something like that. So, here are some terms and policies. <clears throat> As I mentioned, you set the price and release date. Um, competitive revenue share. Now, I can't say what that is, but it's the same as the other platforms. This is one of our kind of strange NDA things, so I can't tell you what it is, but you know what it is. Uh, uh, no concept approval. Now, people often sort of say, oh, do you think we'd be able to bring this game to Nintendo? Do you have to fill something in? No, you don't. You, you, now, you know, the days have changed from back in the 80s where you were only allowed to release a certain amount of cartridges a year and things like that. If your game gets age rated, it's welcome on our platform. We really don't, you know, say, and what we hope is really that the, that the market decides. So, you know, I'm not a massive fan of complete wall gardens, and I think ultimately, like, it should be up to the players to decide what they want to buy. So, uh, we don't have any kind of concept approval. Uh, you can work from home, and that was another one of the stumbling blocks that people used to criticise for, where you have to have like an office. Now, as long as you can keep your dev kit secure at home, you can work from home. So what that usually means is, are there two blocks from outside to where the, uh, where, where the kit is? So for example, you can have a lock in your bedroom, as long as it's like on the door or a safe, for example. And that also means you can work remotely. So if your art director, if your artist is in America, your sound guy is in Australia, and you're based in Norway, you can work together as a team, you can each sign up. Um, so we encourage you to use the features of the hardware. Obviously we have two screens on both our home uh, handheld and our um, living room console. Um, but it's not a deal breaker. 
Um, so if you've built a game that's come out, maybe single screen, something like that, and you want to bring it to consoles later, so we're not going to say to you, you must add this, you must release it at the same time, for example, either you can, it's up to you to make the game you want to make, but obviously the more you take advantage of our hardware features, the easier it is for us to support you and help to make your game. So for example, the Affordable Space Adventures game that was on the previous slide, that makes really good use of two-screen gameplay, TV, and close, and you know, we've been pushing that like heavily at E3, Nintendo Direct, all this kind of thing. I'll speak a little bit later about how we can support you. Uh, there are no fees for game certification. There's no fees for patching. There's basically the only cost you'll come up across, come across is uh, for a decade. Uh, we don't give those away. Uh, and then, of course, age ratings. But um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with IARC. It's like the International Age Ratings something or other. And basically what this is, it's like trying to have kind of a global ESRB thing where you self certify your rating and you don't pay anything. Now, we've committed along with some other platform holders to introduce that. Um, so that'd be great because it gets rid of these USK fees and PEGI fees and uh, I'll say COD fees for uh, um, Oceania. Uh, you can release your games in Europe, Australia and uh, America, the North America region, so anything covered by NOA and NOE. Um, if you want to release in Japan, you have to have an office there or you need to go via a, pub a local publisher because you have to be able to provide customer support in Japanese. So we have a variety of business models, so free-to-play is acceptable, this kind of thing. And um, so DLC, if you want, and you can get some DLC away for free, as long as you don't charge for later versions of it. And we have a flexible patching policy. Obviously, if you've got a free-to-play game that needs content updates and things like that, we can discuss that. And I'd say generally, when you're working with Nintendo, it's, uh, I often sort of say, like, it's easy for me to say what you can't do rather than what you can do. So if ever you're in doubt, you just contact us and say, this is my plan, is this going to work? And obviously the sooner we know that, the better, because you don't want to make a game and then find out that something isn't allowed a couple of months before you're submitting it. <coughs> so uh, tool-wise, there's native development, obviously, and then we, um, a couple of years ago at GDC, we announced um, Unity for Wii U. So we provide that for you free of charge. Uh, version 5 is coming very soon, like really very soon. Um, and the other, and we've also recently announced Unity for the new Nintendo 3DS, so that supports the, the new 3DS, uh, not the um, previous 3DS. And that too will be based on Unity 5 and will also be uh, free. Uh, we also developed internally a HTML5 framework called Nintendo Web Framework. Um, some of the um, non game apps have been made in that, like Google Street View. Uh, some of the uh, VOD services, but also some of the games that have come out, like Earlier Quest that you saw there and X-Type. And uh, to help bring your games across, we've got some um, HTML5 engines, like Construct2, Impact, and Enchant. So this is the uh, development process, just being kind of, it looks really simple. Uh, I could break that down into even fewer, but it's, you know, there are steps to go through. So, how do you become a licensed developer? Now, become a licensed developer, you go to either of these sites here. So if you're interested in Wii U, you go to wiiu developersnintendocom and um, WarioWorld's actually our kind of traditional uh, developer site. So if you want to sign up for Nintendo 3DS, uh, you can go there. This covers you for all Western territories. You don't need to sign up as a developer in America and in Europe. Um, the, the, in Japan, they have a totally different system. Uh, order dev kit. Now for Wii U, we actually have something which is called a deferred payment program, so you can uh, get your hands on a Wii U dev kit, but you don't have to pay up front for it. Uh, you can keep it for a, a, a number of months, and if you're not interested in continuing, you can return it to us free of charge. But then if you actually want to keep it, you don't have to pay at the end of a, a year. So it's a way of mitigating the costs. Uh, hopefully by that stage you've developed your game, you've released it and you're starting to get your money coming in, so then if it's really an issue not being able to afford the uh, dev kit, um, yeah, it's like a decent payment plan. And um, if you can ask me afterwards how much is the dev kit, uh, I'll tell you now, I can't say how much it is, but it's about the price of a development PC. 
which could mean anything really. <laughs> Uh, but if you type into Google, how much does a debt get? Someone's broken down and the A mentioned it, so. Uh. <laughs>